Ah, 2019 has finally come to an end. A lot has transpired in the world of anime this year. One Piece manga has finally been dethroned by Demon Slayer. One Punch Man Season 2 was a big disappointment. We got Isekai, 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 Isekai on steroids. And finally, Legum from Beastars is best girl. After watching dozens of the greatest anime series, I thought it would be dope if I shared 10 series that you guys should also check out. Also disclaimer, this list is in no particular order and I will try my very best not to give any spoilers. So without any further ado, cue up that intro. Man, what could I say about this series? The heaven has blessed us with that 47 minute episode 1. It was truly the first time in a very long time where I was just speechless from an anime episode. At first, we expected a very generic isekai series. A Japanese middle-aged man getting teleported into a Eurocentric world that they have to save. However, our main MC, Naofumi, was summoned as a shield hero, which is very looked down upon in this world. After this very traumatic experience, Naofumi takes on an anti-hero role and goes on a revenge season conquest. Usually, I stay away from rom-coms, but Kagura-sama is easily the exception. This series centers around the relationship of the academic genius and school president Miyuki and the extremely wealthy and beautiful school VP Kagura. From a third-party perspective, these two seem to be a perfect match for each other romantically. However, even though these two seem like a genius in every field, they are extremely underqualified in the field of love. So despite both Miyuki and Kagura having feelings for each other, both of them will not confess. Thus, with pride as elite students on the line, Miyuki and Kagura try to get each other to confess through a psychological war of love. So what happens when two broken beings get together under one roof? The best way to describe the series is the PG version of the sensational Japanese movie Shoplifters. One MC is a shy novelist named Subaru who emerged from a very traumatic experience and tends to isolate himself because he just doesn't like people. That is my type of MC. The other MC is an abandoned cat from the streets. Due to fate, these two characters seem to end up together and through their relationship, they grow as a character and also start to trust the people around them. What I really liked about this series is that half of the episode is from Subaru's point of view and how he tries to accommodate for the cat and the second half of the episode is from the cat's perspective and shows how she tries to look after Subaru. This is honestly a tear-jerking slice of life series and even me, a 100% through and through dog person after watching My Roommate is a Cat, I kind of want a cat girl. <clears throat> no, I mean a cat cat. I honestly could not give enough praise for Demon Slayer the anime series. As the golden era of shonen is finally ending, I definitely needed a new and fresh series to replace that void. Demon Slayer is one of those rare series that does an overly superb job of balancing its themes, story, and art. That's kind of the reason why episode 19 of the series was trending on Twitter. It really mirrors Attack on Titan where the main MC's peaceful life gets turned upside down. And of course, I can't go on without discussing Best Little Sis. Who doesn't want a demon berserker with explosive blood and shrinking Ant-Man capabilities that has a bamboo gag but also will fuck you up without saying a word. And when all is said and done, she takes a nap on the old town road. This is another shonen heavy hitter that I thoroughly enjoyed. It had all of my favorite elements. A post-apocalyptic world, a smart protagonist and antagonist and badass characters all around. And like what I said in my prior video about Dr. Stone, this series is epic. Our evil genius Senku tries to save a deteriorating world where humankind is on its last stand through science. Hey, 
Stop looking at my search history. I mean, that type of science. And what's crazy is that even though Senku is giving a full-blown science lesson, you don't really seem to mind. Because you know after he introduces his latest creation, you love to see him mind-f***ing everybody around him. In this spectrum of morality, there are boundaries that one should not cross. There is something I would like to call the FBI zone, where once you venture into this land of no return, even holy water could not save you. If it's for my daughter, is placed on the spectrum two tick marks before the FBI zone. The FBI helicopter is hovering in a nearby neighborhood, but there is no FBI agents knocking on your door yet. It is safe to say that this series is definitely one of my more guilty pleasures of this anime year. I don't know, I, I just feel like when there's the whole single dad raising a young daughter archetype, I seem to like it. It is something that you barely see in the media, so when you do come across it, it feels very refreshing. If you love your series like Sweetness and Lightning, you will enjoy this series. My only really big qualm about this series is the quote unquote single dad, Dale, who could be very overbearing at times. Like literally he yells, <laughs> as if she is some kind of pet cat. This series was definitely on my top 3. It is a classic example of why you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. I went into the story with a lot of preconceived notions and I came out a converted man. It was an excellent blend of character development, story progression, art, and dark themes. You expect the story to progress smoothly and then all of a sudden the story takes a sharp left turn off a 200 feet tall cliff and as you're falling off the cliff, you are screaming, I need more! I don't want to give anything away, just go into the series blindly and thank me later for introducing you to it. In a bottomless pit of isekai, No Gun's Life was my saving grace. We got an Alphonse looking, 3 pack of cigarette Gintama Toshiro smoking, an 8 car train 1 punch man punching, king's man gentleman looking as boy. I mean man. Not to mention you are throwing in some Michael Bay babes that will light you up like it's the 4th of July. God bless America! Straight up, when I was watching the series, it just made me want to pull out a bottle of aged Japanese whiskey and smoke a Cuban cigar. The mature feeling of the series is really reminiscent of those series from the 80s and 90s that you don't really get to see a lot today. I honestly can't wait to see where Juzo and his goons will fight the anime counterpart of Terminator Skynet. They honestly have to rename the series WWE, the isekai version. The main MC Genzo is like if The Rock read too much Beastars, and the only way to get his attention is like what you would do with Elon Musk. You will walk up to them and whisper cat girls into their ears. That really is the series. A professional wrestler going around German suplexing your anime waifu while tracking down Beast and capturing them like he's playing Pokemon Go. And the reason why people stick around is that it's written by Akatsuki Sensei, who also wrote Konosuba. Thus, Hatage is your typical trash isekai that we love because of its comedy gold. Speaking of isekai trash, the hero is overpowered but overly cautious also fits into that mold. The story follows an OP hero by the name of Seiya, who plays out the same scenario 1 million times before making the next move. This ultimately frustrates his party member and goddess, Ristarte, who needs to save this world to get promoted. Why I like this series is that it's so self-aware that it is an isekai trash series and plays that to their advantage. Like seriously, when is the last time you've seen an isekai hero dragging a goddess at Mach 6 speed with her tits flapping out like hummingbird wings? <laughs> that shit honestly gets me every time. But I hope you guys enjoyed my top 10 list. What anime series did you guys enjoy this year? Share them down below and I'm honestly very excited for 2020 anime. We got ReZero Season 2. Uh, Dr. Stone Season 2, probably a new season of My Hero Academia, so it's gonna be lit. But anyways, see you guys in the next video. Peace out.